I have told you before about one of the men who is my, my heroes, a guy by the name of Peter Story. He led the Church of South Africa, the Methodist Church, during apartheid. And he taught a class called the Church, the Local Church and Mission to the World. Uh, he was firmly convinced that the Church is the way that God changes the world, though he would tell you, and I would echo him, that there are times in which if God had asked my advice, I might have tried to change the world a different way. The, the Church is not always the most obvious way that I would want to change things, right? It doesn't always seem all that effective. But it is what God has chosen, so that's what we have. Peter Story had studied scripture and he looked for what are the verbs, what are the things you do in the New Testament, what are the things you do as someone who follows Jesus that are the actions of the church, if, if, what are you doing as you're following Jesus. And, and he found four verbs, the first verb, uh, kerygma, proclaiming. Uh, in Acts 2, when the uh, Holy Spirit moves, the people go out into the streets and they proclaim, they're telling people, hey, I got to tell you about this good news. That's, so that's the first thing, proclaiming. The second thing, didache, teaching. Right? You, someone says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Tell me more. You've you got to teach them. So the church, to follow Jesus, first you're proclaiming, and then you're teaching. And then diakonia, service. Right? That's where we get the word deacon. Uh, when the first early church realized that there were some little old ladies who were going hungry, they said, we've got to do something about this. We're going to serve people. And so proclaiming and teaching and serving... And then there's the fourth one, the verb that everything else rests upon. The one that you have to have before anything else can happen at all, right? You've got to gather. You've got to have what's called koinonia. And koinonia is what we talk about when we talk about church. That, that's that word there. And, and so when you got a, many of you got a letter in the mail inviting you to get together to think about practicing church, that, that's what the, this is about. We're, we're talking about practicing church, koinonia. What does it mean to gather the bedrock and everything else? You can't teach, you can't serve, you can't proclaim if you don't have some people gathered together first. Gather together in a way of life, of forgiveness and confession, of reconciliation a way of life that says that Jesus is at the center of our life, that all the other things, that, that Jesus prays that we might be one, and so that all the other things that might divide us, male, female, slave, free, Greek, or Jew, and, or as we might say today, city or rural, Republican or Democrat, young or old, all those are secondary to in Christ we are one, and Jesus' prayer for us is that we might be one and bound together, gathered as this church. And when we have gathered as this church, then the rest can happen. Then we can teach. Then we can serve. Then we can proclaim. But first, we have to gather. So that's what we're looking at today. How do we gather in such a way that strengthen the ties that bind us already and make a space for new people to join in? Right? That's the challenge. How do we gather in a way that strengthens the ties that already bind us and how do we make a space to forge new ties to the people who walk through our doors? Now, I do need to tell you some good news up front. I want to tell you fabulous news, exciting news. Here, here it is. If you look at how happy people are in church, churches under 100 are where people are happiest. If you're in a church under 100 in average attendance, that's where people are happiest, most connected, most involved, most supported. That's where people want to be. Right? That's what, there are big churches out there, more power to them. You want to be happy, satisfied, and content, and fed in church, find a church under 100 and make it your home. And you know that, don't you? Because you have made this your home, and you know what that feels like. Well, I want to practice what that feels like today. I want to have experience, not just practice talking about church. I want, we're going to practice something right now. So I need one, two, let me get four volunteers. You don't have to say anything, I promise. I need four volunteers. Sally, okay, and then Joanne, and, and, okay, you four, I got you. Come, come on up here. Oh, and, yeah. And you just stay here and don't do anything. You're going to be marvelous at it, I can tell already. Okay, the rest of y'all, joke's on you. Everyone stand up. I want you to get into four groups. Groupish, group, and then y'all split into two groups. And, and get, I, I need four circles. Four circles. Yep, make four circles. So one probably goes back there, one comes up here, 
One comes over here, and one kind of over here. <laughs> it was really fun in Green City, too. Now, it's got to be a circle. So the line back there, you kind of, you probably need to come on over here and sort of. Yeah, Olivia never knows what's coming either. OK, one, two. OK, excellent. Now, I want you to take one hand, and I want you to grab someone else's hand in the circle, not the person next to you. OK, take the other hand and grab someone else's hand. <laughs> if this circle over here is having some problems, if you want to like migrate down here so you have some more open room and a little bit of flexibility, why don't you come on out here and come on down here. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. Everyone grab someone else's hand across the circle and then grab someone else's hand. Everyone t grab someone else's hand. Okay. Now, in many ways, this is like being part of a church. Do you all feel close to each other? You all feel connected? Well, I'm getting to you. All right? Now, to our four volunteers. Doesn't this look great? Doesn't this look warm and comfortable? Right. Now, if you wanted to be part of this, everyone out here, remember you're holding hands. Each of you go join a circle. They're going to try to join a circle. But you all are holding hands. Don't forget you're holding hands. Now, those of you who are trying to join the circle, is it an easy thing to do? No, it's really not. <laughs> so what does it take if you want to have someone join the circle? Everyone let go, reform the circle with a new person, and then grab each other's hands again. Right? You can grab a cross or that's good. <laughs> Those of you who are volunteers, was it a lot easier the second time when they let go and made room for you? Yeah. Everyone goes to go grab a seat. That's a lot how church functions, isn't it? Right? We have our circles, and we've been part of a church for a long time, and we're all connected, and we're tight, and we're bound to each other's lives. And then if someone sees that warmth, then how many people have said or heard someone else says, I don't know what I do without my church family, right? And so I don't know what I do without my church family, and someone hears that and goes, okay, let me in. What does it take to bring someone in? Can they just kind of weasel their way in? It takes an intentional moment where everyone lets go and reforms the circle. Who is responsible for making that happen? Is it the responsibility of the person trying to get in or the person who's in the circle? It's our responsibility, the people in the circle, isn't it? And to acknowledge the obvious, it's not anything that one of us can do. This is not something we can delegate to our leadership. It's not something we can say, Andy, you're the pastor, you do this. Because let's just acknowledge the obvious. Anyone here have more than two hands? Right? I can only hold on to two people. You can hold on to two people. Each one you can hold on to two people. If we're going to hold together, 
It takes all of us actively grabbing each other, right? Gr building those ties that, that bind us. And so in as much as I have failed, as I try to over-function, everyone who walks in the doors, I try to make sure to grab them and connect to them, and really, I can't do it all. It takes all of us. All of us can do this when one or two of us cannot. And, and to do this well, we have to do it together. We have to do it together because any one of us is overwhelmed. If someone new walks in, when someone new walks in the door, uh, to try to figure out how to bring them in, if it's just me, if I'm the only one who connects to someone, is that a circle? It's a line. And lines are notoriously fragile. Circles have, have strengths to them. Lines are fragile. And, and I'm not enough to do it alone. Some of us love to cook. Some of us love to entertain. Some of us, I've never been in your houses and I never will be, and that's okay, right? All of us have our strengths. Some of us want to go out and hunt. Some of us want to go, go to the game. Whatever it is, we have our various strengths, and together we can, we can, two or three of us can bring someone in when one of us simply cannot. Right, so it takes all of us bit taking the risks to, to try this, right? being willing to acknowledge when we're, we're not perfect. If I have you over for dinner, will my house ever be clean enough to Olivia's standards, or will the meal ever be good enough to my standards? No. I used to kind of give Olivia some flack. I mean, let it go. Don't worry so much about it being a perfect house. And then I would obsess at great length about the meal, because that's what I obsess about. Right? I've got my own hang-ups, and it's, they're just as deep as Olivia's. It's just about a different thing. Right? We all have to be willing to let go of that and be able to... Our, the connections have to be honest about who we are, and we're not perfect. What happens when the circle is not opened and remade? What happens? Can you think of any times when someone has walked in the door, and they're here for a while, and then they fade away? Let me be a little bit more honest. How many times has someone walked in the door and after a while they faded away? What happened? That's not a comment on them. That's a comment on us, right? That we did not take that moment to intentionally open the circle and bring them in and help them feel that connectedness. And not everyone is going to connect, but those who will, they will feel the... the can't, can't imagine living without the, the church. It, but if for those who, who don't, who we don't bring in, what happens is life. And something else happens. And, and the job gets harder, or they're scheduling, or they move. And then this hasn't become something essential. And so it's not something essential. And they fade away. And what happens if, if we're, we, we look around the church is we have the same old, same old, year after year after year. And some come and some go. But it's the same old, same old who are running the church. This practice of bringing people into the circle is how we start to break that. And I know you can do it. I know you can do it because you did it with me. Seven years ago now, this wingnut showed up. City slicker, married, but she's not here. What's he talking about? Right? I'm kind of weird to rural Missouri. For you to open the circle and let me become part of this church, that was a risk. You didn't know what you were getting. But you did it. And now I can't imagine living without this, this church. It is essential to who I am. I know you can do it because you did it with me. This idea of the church as a circle holding hands and connected, that's how I imagine we practice church. Intentionally taking moments to say it's time to open up and bring someone new into the circle. But also, this is how we deepen the connections that we already have. Because when you reform the circle the second time, did you grab the same hands as the first time? No. Right? There are people in this room with whom I have had plenty of coffee, and there are people in this room who I haven't had enough coffee with. Right? There are people in this room that I've spent time with, and it's wonderful, and there are people I, I haven't spent enough time with, and, I, and I'm bummed about that. And, and it, it, what does it take? It just takes me getting on the phone and saying, hey, can I have you over for dinner? Hey, can we get some coffee? Hey, do you want to, whatever you want to do, can I go and share some time with you? Any one of us can do that, but it takes an intentional moment to think, whose hand have I not held? Who, to whom am I not yet connected? Right? So this practice, this idea of being in a circle and, and letting go to make, bring people in, but also grabbing new hands when we reform it, it is how we both strengthen the ties that are already here 
and create a place to bring new people in. Now, how do we do this, Andy? I wish I could give you A, B, C, three, three, do these three steps in this order, and it'd be simple. But life's not that simple, is it? Right? It's not as simple as saying, I'd like to hold your hand. And in fact, if I came up to someone who walked in the church and said, I want to hold your hand and not let go, they'd look at me weird, right? <laughs> understandably. It takes a little bit more thought and discernment and thinking. All right, we have to start thinking, who am I connected with? To whom am I not connected yet? Who is here that I need to know better? Right? These are the decisions that each one of us have to make because everyone only has two hands. And no one of us can do it for the rest. I can remind you, the ministry meeting can talk about it and help with some organizing maybe, but it is something that we need to do ourselves. I have a bit of something to maybe help think through this. Who are my helpers? Can you hand out some? And can you hand out some? And then, where'd my other choice? I went back. Excellent. I need one too. Thank you. This is something that you're going to see often. I think it is something we need to sh put in every newsletter from here into eternity. Something like this to be a point of discussion at ministry meetings, at church-wide meetings. Every time we have some sort of communication, I think this is something we need to, to, to acknowledge and to think about. It, it, it's an experiment, right? And if this works well, great. And if it doesn't work, we'll modify it and do something else. But this is what it says. I, insert name here, enjoy spending time with my friends in the church, and the, these two friends. But I'd also like to get to know these other friends as well. Might we try doing something together? Right? Not complicated, not challenging, but who is it that you don't know yet in the church that it's time to hold their hand and try something together? And then the second line, is there anyone new to my church that I need to bring into our circle? This is an experiment. This is a way of thinking through this. Right? Some of us are already doing this, and. and doing it just by nature of who we are. This is not a, a, an invitation to overfunction, but some of us need to help. All of us need to be doing this. And part one of the fears might be that this might be overwhelming. Someone comes into the church, we don't want to like dogpile them. A, we're Midwesterners. We're nice. I'm not worried about that. And B, how many things do you intend to do and you don't quite follow through on? I'm not going to show you my list of to-dos for the week because it's shameful how much I didn't get to. If, if someone new walks in the door, when someone new walks in the door, and if half of you notice and intend to do something about it, then maybe a quarter will actually do it, because life happens, right? And that's fine. And if we hit the problem where people are paying too, mu too much attention to those who want to join, we'll figure it out by then, and ain't that a great problem to have, right? I encourage you to take a look at this and take it seriously. We're going to have a meal today so that you have time to talk about this with others in the church. We have sent out those invitations so I could put this in front of you. This, this is important. You're going to get a phone call in about two weeks from myself or Jody or Scott, who have been my partners in crime as we put this together, to make sure, A, you understand, and B, what do you think about it? This is not some transitory, Andy had a good idea. This, this is something that needs to become part of the nature of what it means to be Milan United Methodist Church. We're re strengthening the ties that bind us and connecting to people who walk, forging new ones with people who walk in the door. As we do that, we are strengthening our ability to then proclaim, to teach, to serve. We'll continue to be able to do what God desires us to do, and the church will be fulfilling God's missions for it. We will be changing the world with every person who walks in the door. I know you can do it because you did it with me, and I look forward to seeing how you do it with others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Where's my clicker? It's small and black. Where did my clicker go?